Welcome to the Grow Buddy Greenhouse. I'm going to be showing you how I set up my Grow Buddy units. It's very easy. I have everything contained in the unit. So you pull out the reservoir, and inside the reservoir, you have your four inch net cup with your clay pebbles, and you have all the lines to assemble your Grow Buddy. So you're gonna go ahead and start by putting on a valve connected to the reservoir. And they just push in, just like that. You're gonna connect the valve that has the T attached to the input of the float valve, which is right here. And then you're gonna connect the last drain at the bottom of the grow buddy. There's a four inch line to connect the reservoir to the float valve. And you can cut this however short you'd like. And then you're gonna put the reservoir above the grow buddy. So you can cut this and you can also use some of the excess line to extend your drain. Next, you're gonna fill up your grow buddy I use reverse osmosis water. It just helps with the pH. It lowers the pH in my area. It's very acidic. Reverse osmosis removes most of the acidic. So I'm going to be using General Hydroponics Flora Series. And you have liquid, micronutrients, grow, bloom and then I add cow mag and when I start a seedling in one of these it's five gallons so I'm only doing one mil per gallon of each so I have all these set up with five mils and that puts my ppms at 200 so I go ahead and start by adding the micro and then just stir it in and we're going to be going down the line Micro, grow, bloom, and then the cow mag. And if you use reverse osmosis water, you should be starting at zero ppms. And then adding this puts me at 200. And I'll show you with my meter when it's full. My tap water, if I don't send it through the filter, it starts off at 300 parts per million with whatever's in the water from the plant so I would recommend going through an RO filter just so that you're starting off at zero and you know what's in your water because it's just what you're putting in now I'm gonna go ahead and add the grow and you can just take your time there's no rush you're not going to be doing any nutrient swaps but for about four to five weeks. This first set of nutrients that you put in is going to start your plant, which this is a three week old seedling. And you can see the amount of roots we have. And this is going to start off at 200 parts per million. And it's going to take between four and five weeks for it to reach the float valve point, which is a, a little bit lower than the halfway point of the bucket. And by that time, it's ready to be bumped up in nutrients. So once the float valve is kicked in and it reaches that level, you can swap the nutrients simply by draining the unit and refilling it with the reservoir. Mix your nutrients in the reservoir. That way you know that it never fills up higher than that level. If you were to fill these up manually and you fill it up too high, you risk drowning your plant. Because once you let the roots form into oxygen roots in that air gap, they can't be submerged. So the float valve keeps that level consistent preventing that from happening. Now I'm gonna add the bloom, five mils.
This runs a little bit slow. This is just working off of gravity from the tank right behind the camera. I have a pump that I could turn on which will make it feel faster if I need to, but it's really loud and it would you wouldn't be able to hear me. So we're gonna fill this one up slow. So here's the CalMag, five mils. I've also used powdered nutrients, General Hydroponics, Maxi Grow, Maxi Bloom, and they work, you know, they work. I haven't done comparisons back to back yet, but they both work. I just personally like using the liquids, but the powders work too. So now I'm just waiting for it to fill up and where you're trying to get it to is right below the float valve. So you have this brass fitting here and you're gonna be filling up the water right to the bottom of this brass fitting. And you'll know because this does not have a watertight seal. And if you overfill this, it will start dripping out of here to go down to that level. I purposely don't seal this because I don't want you to fill it up higher than the bottom of this valve. So the net cup will be submerged down right about here an inch or two below the, va the valve. So your roots are gonna be in the water starting off and then they're gonna easily have time to reach the bottom before the water needs to be replaced. So just don't overdo the nutrients. These meters are great. They, they will let you know right where you're at. So it's showing that right now I'm at 300 and because I'm using RO water, it's only going to be going down. The more water I add, it's just going to keep going down. So I'll show you. Right now it's at 300. But when it's filled, it'll be down to 200. I recommend you get a pH meter keep it calibrated. So right now I'm at 5.6 and it's gonna stay right about there. It may go down to 5.5, but for these tomatoes, I wanna be between 5.5 and 6.5. So I'm not gonna need to do any adjusting. The, the pH of the RO water it's around 6.5, so adding the nutrients lowered it down to 5.5. So I didn't have to do any adjusting, but always check and adjust your pH. So you can see this is the water, my normal water, my tap water, 7.3. So you're at 5.6 in there. So always check your pH, make sure you're within range. We're almost full. And what I do is I always keep my reservoir full with regular RO water and I set the pH correctly. And that feeds my unit until I swap out nutrients. So in between nutrient changes, I only keep RO water in the reservoir. So my PPMs inside my grow buddy will never go up. I'm never gonna have to worry about, you know, exceeding the nutrients in any way because what I put in here is all it has. And then the water is just being topped off with the RO water. So you don't run the risk of having too many nutrients after the float valve kicks in, which like I said, takes between four and five weeks, then the, it'll be working off the float in the reservoir. At that point, any time you can drain the unit 
and refill the unit with nutrients. I like to use the reservoir and it just fills the nutrients back up to the correct level and then I put regular RO water in my reservoir and keep it fed with just RO water for a week or two and I replace the nutrients again, slowly bumping it up. So it's quite simple and all you need is to get the nutrients because there's no medium. You don't have to buy a bunch of cocoa or anything like that. So you just need to get your nutrients. So we're looking, we're looking good. It's right below the brass valve. So at that point, I'll double check my readings. Okay, 5.6, looking good. And then the PPMs, there it is at 200. So for a little seedling like this, three weeks old, you don't want to start it with a lot of nutrients. It's just been in this cup, starting off, and now it's ready to go into my grow buddy. And that's it, it's set up. I can swap out nutrients once it starts feeding off the reservoir and slowly start bumping it up. All right, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Out for now.